1015 FM, 720 AM. Don, the talk of Las Vegas. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Las Vegas. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. One full hour of wrestling news, entertainment, and lots of Sin City surprises from inside the squared circle. Now, let's bring on the tag team of Andrew Fish Fame. Joe DeFalco, and your host, Mark Hoke. My name is Mark Hoke, the show's certifiable G and a semi bona fide stud, and you can't teach that. And this co host right here is Big Fish. He's almost six feet tall. <laughs> And co-host of Sports X Radio on Monday nights here on KDWN, and you can't teach that. Right, S A W F T, soft. <laughs> and we've also got Mighty Joe DeFalco, a New York King and the master of future stars of wrestling, and you can't teach that. Bada boom, realist guys in the room, Las Vegas. How you doing? Oh, good Lord. Practiced that all week, probably. Yeah, you know he did. One time. One time right now. (sighs) And and where's Enzo now? (laughs) (laughs) And by the way, I'm a little taller than almost six feet tall. Big money. (laughs) I'm I'm a little bigger than almost six feet tall. How tall are you? Six three. You are six three? Yeah. Oh, shorted you. I apologize. I guessed. It fit. Good Lord. Anyway, welcome to the Mark Hoke Show. You, you'll you find out later why I did that. Okay. In case you weren't paying attention to some little hints MJF was dropping this week on AEW. I was not paying, obviously not paying attention yeah. to those hints. Yeah, but we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But of course, the best in professional wrestling news and entertainment. I'm Mark Hoke along with Andrew Fish Fane and Joe Happy DeFalco. Sunday, everybody. Good morning. Worst bad beat ever this weekend, Fish. What'd you do? Nah, I had a team winning by 10 runs going into the ninth inning, and I had them on the run line. And they, they didn't blow the game. They they called the rain out. Oh. oh. Top of the ninth, the, the Royals and the uh, Yankees the other day. That's not I right. I had them in two round robins, four teamers. <laughs> I, win, I win all eight games. Except then I had the Angels, and it turned out Syndergaard didn't start, so that didn't count either. That's so not right, because the Angels ended up winning that game anyway. Right, 5-1. Oh. So instead of winning like 500 bucks, I won 150 <sighs> Yet I went 8-0. No. Get out of here. Wow. <laughs> well, I, I will say this. I think today we're going to need the... the uh, the Joe DeFalco executive thinking cap on because we have some 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 uh, questions to ask. I think that are pertinent. Uh, I'm that here to, answer, be able to them answer all. Oh man, I'll tell you, just some a lot of interesting things happened this week. To say Absolutely. The least. Now, aside from what's been going on on the shows, but of course, leading off the snip 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 snip, the snip. budget the budget cuts have come again. Yes, yeah, big budget. Those NXT high salaries. Yeah, I was just gonna say these, these can't be budgetary. There's, 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 they don't make anything. This is uh, very interesting. Well, maybe, maybe they decided having fifty-seven women in two matches didn't work out well. That's a yeah. possibility. So NXT has released ten talents. Uh, Sean Sapp of Fightful dot com breaking all that news. So here's who went down in NXT. Dexter Loomis, Dakota Kai, Malcolm Bivens, Harland, Persia Parada, Raylin Devine, Mila Milani, Draco Anthony, Sanjana George, and referee Blair Baldwin. Have I heard been. of a couple of them. But, and my first question there is, Harland to me is the biggest disappointment of that because they were very, when they, when they first signed Parker Boudreaux, they were very high on this guy and they really didn't do anything with him. What happened? Well, maybe uh, when they had him in the ring, they realized he couldn't do anything. That, I mean, when he, when, he, when he was first signed, they were touting him as the next Brock Lesnar. And from what uh, what was reported, 
Uh, they said that he had not progressed in the ring quite enough for their liking. So Harland uh, was sent packing. Uh, Dakota Kai was apparently not going to re-sign, so they sent her out. And Malcolm, Malcolm Bivens, Bivens refused to resign in February. Yeah, he wasn't going to resign then, resign, but said he wasn't come back. It would be an all wishy-washy. Of course, the manager of the Diamond Mine stable down there, who was you know really, I mean, outside of the ring, was carrying that group. He gone. I, I would imagine this is going to lead to Roderick Strong leading, leaving at some point in the near uh, future. I, I can't see how Roderick Strong is going to be a part of NXT anymore. I really can't. Well, we're, you know, Rod, Roddy's a, a great dude. He's a great wrestler. But it's kind of like Bobby Fish. Like, mm-hmm. where'd he go? Yeah. Hopefully I, he'll get signed somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it's, I, I think Roderick's days are numbered. But, you know, with Dakota Kai, too, I... You know, she was a little bit older than what the the NXT demographic is for what they're looking for in there, and you you have to get to a point where if you're going to get called up, you know, it's 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 either do or die. You know what I mean? You've got to be at that level where they say, "Hey, you know, we want you up here. We want you up." No, here. I, I get and, that, but. Dakota Kai, Dexter Loomis, and Harlan even, because Harlan was with that whole Joe Gacy thing. All three of them were involved in pretty major storylines yeah. at NXT. To be released right while in the middle of a major storyline just seems kind of bizarre. And there's a, this apparently the staff's not happy about But Dexter Loomis is the one that really surprised me because I thought he did. I thought he was pretty good. And especially when you make a guy be stone-faced constantly. I mean, he, he hadn't spoken for God, a year and a half, two years in there because of the character he was playing. He was playing this, you know, psycho, stiff, you know, like a like a horror film villain. Right. No, absolutely. You know, Every kind of cross guy. light. Yeah. We used to call him. Yeah. And, you know, but I, I really thought he was, you know, he was on his way. So yeah, I was he, a he, was, he seemed like a solid guy. worker in the ring, too. Yeah. So I, I liked him as Sam Shaw. So, yeah, that's his name, by the way. So they're gone and, uh, and the Persian, Persian NXT continues, and I have a feeling people are going to have to get used to seeing that because the philosophy at NXT now is: look, if we don't think you're going to make it, you're out, and we're not we're not messing around anymore. It's not. It's funny you you proceeded to say earlier, you know, he didn't progress the way they wanted to in the ring. You know, not like one of their top prospects. Almost the way he's progressed has just been tremendous. Yeah, I know. Wow, and and yeah. and that is that is a major. Co- you know, it's funny because I watched SmackDown. I finally had the time to get to really watch SmackDown for first time in a while, and I watched Shanky, who's with yeah. Jinder Mahal. Well, it's big dude, they're, they're teasing a break there, but yeah, but really big guy. He's flying around the ring. He looked good for you know. I mean, for even, a big guy, yeah. Even for a big guy, he looked good. But who's getting the push? Almost. Who is giant Gonzalez, Gonzalez territory? We all know it. Everybody sees it, except for WWE. And you know, and of course, they they rip MVP away from Bobby Lashley. So you hurt Lashley to go work with somebody that because just, they, it's they not really, there. I, they really want somebody almost to work. Help. I would say they they really want almost to work, and the only way they're going to do it is to give him a mouthpiece like MVP because it's obvious almost can't talk. No, he can't. And. Well, he, he just you know, doesn't. and it's obvious that Lashley they wanted to make a face, and you know they really didn't have uh, the the spot for him in that situation. Lashley, you know, can cut a promo; he can write on his own. Uh, and you you know, can... I heard they can actually have Lashley. I mean, uh, MVP wrestle for almost in the matches. That, <laughs> that, that might help him. He might have better matches that way. Hey, you just mentioned SmackDown, and something happened on SmackDown that I I, I am just completely baffled by because the entire storyline was going to be the Usos versus RK Bro to unify the tag team titles. Then out of nowhere, they say, okay, that match is no longer going to happen. Now it's a six-man tag because we're throwing Roman Reigns in and Drew McIntyre. Do you know what match I was most excited to see on WrestleMania Backlash what? coming up on uh, May 8th? RK Bro versus the Usos? Uh-huh. Yeah, me too. I was jacked for I, that one. And, and, and it's, it's the first because, time that a tag team match in WWE really has gotten my attention and that, in a and long Joe, time. And Joe had been mentioning that for the past few weeks. It, is, it hadn't been done before, so it looked great. And they killed it, and I don't know why they killed it. I'm going to say somebody pulled their creative control card. 
You think so? Nah, it's possible. So do you think I, they you know, I don't know, maybe where lose? they wanted to go. Other people didn't want it to go that way. Uh, you know, probably, you know, Vince is so high on, you know, Roman Reigns that the Usos basically bleeds off on them that no matter how many DUIs, nothing happens to those dudes. Because it, it would seem to me it would be perfect to set up the match of just McIntyre. Because McIntyre versus Reigns to me is a match I'd love to see as well. Actually, yeah, absolutely. Well, may, may, maybe the setup's the old tried and true way they handle the tag belts and the U.S. belt and the Intercontinental. You know, in the six man, Drew McIntyre pins Roman Reigns, and that really solidifies him as the number one contender. Wasn't he supposed to do something with? Sami Zayn, or was that at the SmackDown, the cage match? That was, that, a, Smack, that was, on, that was a cage was match Smackdown. when SmackDown had happened. Yeah, they actually opened oh, SmackDown okay. with the cage match after. Gotcha. And by the way, I, I forgot to mention this. You know they had a count-out on a Lumberjack match the week before. <laughs> They had a lot of count on a lumberjack <laughs> match. For those that don't know what a lumberjack <laughs> match is, so a guy can't run away, you have the ring surrounded by wrestlers, and if he gets in the ring, everybody pounces on him and throws him back in. Somehow, your, Sami Zayn got away and got a count out. There you go. It's quick. In a lumberjack match. Lightning. <laughs> The worst lumberjacks of all time. <laughs> they really were. Only WWE can do those kind of matches. Oh. See, that's the one thing. Again, AEW wouldn't do that. You know? It's like they'll find a way for Brian Danielson to lose to Paige and it don't affect them. They'll find a way. You know, I'm curious to double or nothing. You know, what CM Punk's going to do? Are they gonna, are they going to put the belt on him? I still think Adam Page has been flat for for months. So it's yeah. funny because because although he is the champion at AEW, he doesn't seem to be the headliner of AEW at all. I mean, he's like no, not at all. He's like fourth. But isn't the champ supposed to be the headliner? Well, he's supposed to, but a lot of times it didn't happen in WWE too. That you know, the the main guy was. You know, somebody else, like he was Lesnar. He was the main guy, but for a while he didn't hold the belt, even though he wasn't around. Yeah, so. but, he was still, but he was at least still going for the belt. Yeah, and it it brings to mind a bigger problem in WWE that it came up, and I think the story had broken, like, on Monday, if I remember right, that Vince McMahon apparently had put down an edict that we need to fix our heels and our faces, so the good guys and the bad guys. We've got to shift everybody around because we have all these people miscast. So I didn't see, hear this yeah, so yeah, he uh, came up and you know, he said, "Hey, we've got we've got to move these people around and get them back where they're supposed to be." So you are seeing a lot of feel uh, feel and haste turns, yeah, heel and face turns right now. Like Rhea Ripley would be an example of that. But isn't, so, it, but aren't with someone whether someone's a heel or a face as much as they they can push it one way or the other? But isn't it up to the, the whether the crowd's hot for them or not? If the crowd loves you, no matter how much of a heel you try, they try to make you, you're still going to be a face. So that's what happened with Steve Austin. Well, and but my my point is that things have gotten really convoluted in WWE. You see so many people shifting from one side to the other. Storylines are twisted and turned. Yeah, like, I mean, Kevin Owens went from heel to face sense. to heel like in no time flat. Right. It's it, it it's like Big Show on steroids right now in WWE, and they and apparently Vince finally kind of looked at it and said, "Wait a minute, we gotta we gotta slow down here." And, and it's almost like creative is just throwing a dartboard one week to the next and seeing what's going to stick instead of. Hey, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna do a storyline here and see what happens. So they've, they. I mean, I, I, to be honest with you, I, I was shocked that the, I love it, but the, the edge heel turn was so successful because he was so popular upon his return that I thought there's no way they could make this guy a heel, and they've done it very, very well. Yeah. So I, I think that they are taking a look at their product and saying, we, we've got to clean some of this up. But, but that's a problem with creative. And, and I mean, Joe, do you run into those kind of things where? All of a sudden, you're like, oh, you know, I you know, we tried this person as a heel, it didn't work, and yeah, you know, we've got to we've got to really make some shifts here. You, I mean, are you sympathetic yeah, to that? It, 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 the thing is, when it, when you run less shows, and you know, WWE is always in constant motion, so it's it's a little easier for them to do it. But yeah, you see situations where, you know, we put somebody in a spot. You know, kind of happened with Cross. 
you know, uh, when he was first coming in, you know, he was built as this monster heel because, you know, he was this psycho type of character. But then all of a sudden, you know, fans saw him on Monday Night Raw and they became their guy. And no matter how much he threatened to, you know, beat up everybody in the uh, everybody in the audience, they would still cheer him. So it was kind of like well, we're kind of fighting against a force of nature there. And then we brought in the baby face commissioner who basically had to be the heel commissioner because no matter what he did, everybody was on Cross's side. So it's like, there's nothing you can do to change it. Why would you? Yeah, it's it's going to be an interesting time here, I think, over the next six weeks with WWE. Because there's going, to, there's going to be a lot of shifting and... You know, hopefully they just don't screw up their story like that. You know, like they did with the six man match. You know, it just seems very out of the blue. Unless, unless they want and to extend that storyline for one more uh, premium live event. I love that you said premium live. Oh, event. I said it's it on, starting I, to roll I, off the tongue. I, I, now, I did isn't it on it? purpose. Yeah, very but, good. You know, and the funny thing is, is is you know WrestleMania is obviously their big show, and they have the other the but Money in the Bank, which is coming up, I think, in two months. That's the show where you just see who they're trying to strap the rocket to. Yeah. Because whoever they give that briefcase to, both men and women, is somebody that they want to push. Yeah, and but I mean, you look at wrestlers like Nikki Ash was one that. What What is that character doing as a heel? She's not doing anything as anything right now. Yeah, I know. But I'm just you know that's an example of you know why why make her bad. Yeah, when, you know, when she was Nikki Cross, she was fantastic if, doing whatever she wanted to do. Yeah, I mean, if you were going to, you know, you could make her a super villain and make her a heel that way, but it didn't It didn't make sense. But where's Alexa so, Bliss? <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> She's kind of wondering that herself, actually. But, yeah, so... But so was Ali, and now he's back. Yes, he's back, and, and that was kind of my next thing that happened on Raw. The letter A is the big winner of the week on Monday Night Raw. <laughs> As Asuka and Ali both are back, Asuka coming in, and apparently she's going to be messing with Becky Lynch. Yeah, I just love the little boop she did on her nose. <laughs> that was great. I used that, to do that, that to my kids. No, that was, that was, it was absolutely perfect. It was so ca- in character for Asuka and so perfect. I love Asuka. I really do. I, and I'm, I'm excited to see her back in the ring. I just again wish she could be better on the mic. I really do. Yeah. Well, she's Japanese. No, so. I know, but she is fantastic. And I hope they don't, they don't mess with that character and, and make her start losing a lot. And I mean, because they obviously built her up to be this huge thing when she had that win streak. And then screwed it up at WrestleMania, of yeah. course. But, but Asuka is back. But the one that really surprised me, because we knew Asuka was coming back from the injury, but Ali, who was looked like he was in purgatory... Mustafa, I still can't, they say his name differently. Mustafa Ali was supposed to be, looked like he was going to get benched for three years. Yeah, he demanded his release. And and all of a sudden, he's back, and it looks like he's going to be in the U.S. title picture chasing Austin Theory and messing with Ciampa. Ciampa went after him after that, after for no he reason, beat the no. Miz. And this is just kind of out of the blue. Hi. Hello. And beating the Miz is, is you know. It, that's a pretty decent push from WWE if they have you beaten Miz. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, what are you, and both of you, what are your reactions to Ali returning to the ring? I think it's great because I think he's a great worker. I think he does fantastic work inside the ring. And I, I was sad to see him not be able to wrestle for WWE when he wanted to leave. And I'm glad they've decided they're going to use him and that him and Vince McMahon have come to some sort of agreement now on which way the character is going to go. Yeah, of course, go. they had a big fight about that. And that was part of the reason I think he got benched. It's kind of a statement thing. Joe, what are your thoughts on Ali coming back? Well, my thoughts are you're not going to release the guy. You're paying him a bunch of money. Uh, you're paying a bunch of money to a guy who really wasn't over. You know, it was a guy that they wanted to push who was fresh and, and, and people liked the idea. But he really wasn't at a point because when he came back, it wasn't like, oh, oh my goodness, Ali's back. I, oh, fantastic. Eh, nobody cared. It was just like, you know, the few people were like, oh, wow, cool. You know, the thing is, those WWE fans, a lot of them, like, have no knowledge of what, what's happening on the inner work. And used to them, he was just a guy who was gone for a while. So, you know, it, it sure wasn't the return of The Rock. No, but WWE kind of ruined Ali when they, with, with the way they ruined Retribution. Because yeah. that whole storyline could have been fantastic. And they just absolutely <laughs> they ruined they, everybody. I, I mean, it's like, they, what the hell were you guys thinking? Yeah, that was unbelievable. By the way, this is the Mark Hoke Show on KDWN, 101.5 FM, 720 AM. We are the talk of Las Vegas. 
just a great radio station and a terrific show with, of course, Andrew Fish, Fane, Joe DeFalco, and myself. Uh, yeah, it, it was, you know, the whole thing, because Ali had that huge push for a while. He got hurt, and that kind of led to Kofi Mania, right. if you remember all that. It was going to be Ali in that in that spot instead of Kofi. Yeah, and and then all of a sudden, you know, he's hurt, he's gone for a while. You put him in the Retribution stable, which just was and then you trash. Have, then you have him teaming with Mansoor, who they thought all, who seemed all of a sudden had a rocket tagged his back, and Mansoor disappeared. Now, Mansoor is apparently part of this new stable, which is going to be L.A. Knight stable. Yeah. So we're going to get see. And it's going to be headlining all the main events uh, moving forward. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, The sarcasm of Joe DeFalco, everybody. Um, and, yeah, I mean, so it was, I mean, it was an interesting Raw, but, you know, of course, they were celebra- celebrating Randy Orton. For our chaos at the end 20, of the Raw. 20, 20 years. And, boy, I'll tell you, as bitter as Randy Orton seems sometime, we've said it before, he just seemed so happy that night. This is and, the, like, the happiest I've ever seen Randy Orton. Uh, and and he just seems like, and, and that's what I, I wish that mo- you could see that on more performers in WWE, that they seem like they're having fun. It doesn't look like very many of them are having fun doing their job right now. Randy Orton and Riddle look like they are having fun. I, was about to say, I don't think it's hard. It's going to be hard not to have fun working with Riddle because Riddle just looks like that kind of fun dude. Well, plus they're stoned all the time. Too. Well, that too. So, you know, it's funny. You look at a guy like Randy Orton and you think, you know, 20 years, like, he doesn't look like he'd be doing anything for 20 years. No. Like, you know, to me, he doesn't look like a 42 year old guy. Like, he, he's, in, he's in fantastic shape, you know, and he's kind of slid through. And maybe it's because he's been so good for so long that you forget how long it's been because. You know, when they talk about the Miz, I thought they were saying something about 15 years, and it's hard to believe that Orton's only been around five more years than the Miz. Yeah, it, it and I and I really hope that when this is done with RK Bro, that Randy's going to get one more big run. I wasn't excited about that before, but now seeing this Randy Orton. Now I want to see Randy take on Roman Reigns. Now I am actually excited about, say, is, about that possibility. If Randy gets another run, is he going to get that run as a face or as a heel? I Because I, he's done some of his best work as a heel, obviously. But right now as a face, he's fantastic. I, I think he'll leave him as a face. You know, you can keep him and, and uh, riddle, riddle his buddies. Riddle be jealous or whatever it is, and he ends up being the... And again, maybe, you know, Riddle becomes a face again down the line, but I, the idea is to capitalize on the strengths, and the strengths right now is, you know, Randy Orton face stay, stay in that way. You know, if Randy Orton turns heel, it just becomes, ugh, Randy Orton just turned heel again. So now he's tied the big show for 36 heel turns in a <laughs> WWE career. It's like Kevin Owens, because they've done the same thing with Kevin Owens, and I feel bad for Kevin Owens, because he, I think he's another fantastic worker that they don't know where they want to put him. I, I Same with Seth Rollins. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they, and, and that's what I think Vince was looking at, saying, we got to focus these guys down a little bit. You, know, you have to, they've got to have refined rules. You can have the anti-hero, but that means they're the hero. They're not, you know, whatever you feel like you making them, you're making them this week. It, it's got you know, they, they got to get some consistency. If, you know, if you look at those guys, Seth Rollins and, and and Owens, they're just so good as heels. It's it's and so the thing is, people start to like them when they're doing something, you know. And then it becomes that that's when it becomes that difficult process of man, this guy's so good as a heel. Like, look at Roman Reigns. Like we knew for three years that this guy needs to be a heel. Right. And then when they finally put him in that position, it was like, oh, yeah, that, that looks like it's going to work. But they but they yeah. didn't do it with Cena yeah. when uh, everybody thought Cena should be a heel. Absolutely. Hey, Joe, well, let's continue that thought when we come back. Uh, we have to head into break. Boy, I wish we didn't have to do commercials sometimes. But got to pay the bills around here. And uh, we so we are going to be back on the Mark Hoke Show with uh, – Joe DeFalco and Andrew Fish Fane get into that, and uh, we'll dive into AEW. Punk challenging for the world title, and somebody from Impact is showing up, and he's tall. It should be fun. So stick around, everybody. We will be right back.
Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show. Like us on Facebook at The Mark Hoke Show. And visit MarkHokeShow.com to keep up with everything happening with the show. And remember to check out all of our archive shows on YouTube at The Mark Hoke Show and download our podcasts at MarkHokeShow.Podbean.com and all your favorite podcast outlets. So join The Mark Hoke Show family today, and thanks for listening. 1015 FM, 720 AM, KDON, the talk of Las Vegas. You're listening to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Vegas, The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Now, here again is Mark Hoke. That's me. That's me, the D O double G O A. We already pulled that stunt once. I don't think we can do it again. No, we can't. No, we can't. We, 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 can't, we can't gimmick it fringe twice. And if you're not done with that, <laughs> I got two words for you. <laughs> you're fired. Anyway, Mark Oak here on the Mark Oak Show, the number one professional wrestling show here in Las Vegas. Andrew Fish Fain. By the way, Fish Sport in the, is that orange pink? It's coral. Coral hair today. It's an interesting shift for you. I think it looks good. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not making fun of you. I'm, I'm just, hiding from the law. They're looking for a blonde guy. Oh, I'm not blonde yeah. anymore. Yeah, Fish had the bleach blonde, but now he is coral. Interesting. And of course, Joe DeFalco, future stars of wrestling. And make sure if you want to see the best in indie wrestling, and of course, if you want to learn to wrestle, best in indie wrestling, ref- nothing. The best in wrestling. Period. Yeah, they're awesome. Go to fswvegas.com and check out everything Joe has. Going on down at the FSW arena, and Joe, I want you to train me to be a referee. Uh, there you go. Well, you got to come down. You know, yesterday in the last two days, Kenny King's been down there training with a couple of uh, AEW probies. Uh, Kayla Rossi, who was working with Joey Janela on Dark a little bit, she's working on getting her first match. And uh, this girl Ashley Diembois, she's on AEW Dark, so they were in town. Uh, Kayla Rossi, she lives out here. She's a, she's a fitness chick who basically never wrestled in her life. She was friends with Brian Cage, and he said, oh, you should try to uh, you know get into the wrestling business. And immediately, WWE gave her a tryout, and somehow she's now uh, signed on AEW. So. Wow. Amazing. And, you know. As we said, we got our big show, AEW Weekend, uh, the the Full Tilt Weekend Collective, the, the names that are going to be on hand at the Silver Nugget that weekend, are the Briscoes, the Matt Cardona, Hammerstone, Davey Richards, Trey Miguel, Willie Mack, Rich Swan, like it's a who's who of, of the wrestling community, and they're all going to be at the Silver Nugget on uh, Friday and Saturday. And you know who May else is going to be there? The 28th. Joe DeFalco is going to be there. And I'll be there. And that's all D-Lo, that matters. D'Lo Brown's going to be on commentary. I, I want. I want to be the, the this generation's Danny Davis. No. Uh, <laughs> you know, we do need somebody fish who can uh, grab the gear when the wrestlers put him down. So that, I think that's a good spot for you. I don't think you can mess that one up. <laughs> fish can mess anything up. Trust me. You ever produce his show on Monday night? Holy God. Hey <laughs> That hurts. No, I'm kidding. But Ben, by the way, make sure you tune into Sports X Radio on Monday nights here. He's with Fish and Chips, his co host Bernard Barnes. They do a great job uh, doing the Monday show for Ken Thompson here on Sports X so Radio. Is 8 the PM other Pacific. host named like Chip Wilson or something? <laughs> no, I just, I just threw the. Well, if I'm Fish, I got to have a Chips. So I just gave him the if nickname it's Chips. Fish and Chips, it should be like, you know, Chip something. He should like at least call himself that. Come on. Hey, I got to be Malt Vinegar, so... You I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna talk to Bernard into changing his name to Chip something. I like that. Thank you, Joe. There you go. I'm, there you I'm, go. I'm sure, I'm sure Bernard's going to go for that. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> anyway, but, uh, you know, just Joe, finish your thought about the switch and heel and face there real quick. Well, you know, again, you, you a good... A good company is going to dictate what the fans want because that's what the fans want. And WWE, the the two most uh, over characters where they weren't getting as over as much was a John Cena, who the crowd was starting to despise, but they they decided never to pull the trigger on his heel turn. 
Uh, but then with Roman Reigns after he came back when the with the fake leukemia angle where he actually got sympathy <laughs> and now people wow. cared, all of a sudden, boom, they hit him with the uh, the heel turn and now he's probably one of the biggest heels in the last 15 years that WWE has ever produced. And it's if if Roman Reigns is where he's at right now, where they did the heel turn, I wonder how much it would have been a bigger deal if John Cena did it down the line because that's the one where people, you know, were just livid for that and having him turn heel and, and take out, you know, oh. one of the numerous top baby faces of the day might have been one of the biggest feuds of I, all time. The, I, I, got the, the I would say the funny thing is, is they were afraid to do it because because of how much merchandise Cena sold. But Roman Reigns sells more merchandise as a heel than he ever sold as a of face. Of course. Yeah. And that's the thing. And it's like, you know, sometimes you got to you got to take that shot. You know, staleness is the most you know, important thing that you have to try to like stop. That's when we talk about a Randy Orton or a big show and it turns back and forth. It just becomes so stale that you, to freshen things up and Roman Reigns to now engage in being a heel was it was the best business move these guys have done in the last 10 years. I, I wanted a stable where a few years ago I wanted Heyman to take over managing Cena and Reigns and put him with put them with Brock Lesnar and just tear the WWE apart. I that was something I wanted so bad. When they were both getting booed, I'm like, put him with Heyman. See, I put would, him with Heyman, I, I, put him with Lesnar, and they will and and you know the the battle to rescue WWE would have been amazing. I still think that the, the bloodline stable is too small. That there are people they could have had. Like I, I, I knew she was like go, but I thought Nia Jax would have been a perfect addition to the bloodline stable. Well, before, Naomi before would be the perfect addition. She is too. Yeah, absolutely. She's married to one of these. Oh, things, so. but Nia Jax is related to him. Is uh, yeah. that's my point? Is they they could make these sta- that stable so much bigger, and they don't. I don't understand why. I don't know if you need to make it too much bigger. I think one more guy in a female presence would have done it. Well, if you look at it now, you have, um, you know, maybe one of the greatest champions of all time in the faction with a tag team that's been pushed as one of the best tag teams of all time. So to throw in, not that it wouldn't help that mid-card person, male or female, because it would, but, you know, I understand why they wouldn't do it. It's kind of like when we've put factions together or somebody with a manager and it's like, oh, you know, I think it'd be cool to have him as a manager. And it's like, but you're a jobber. You know, if a manager is presented as a loser, then what's the whole point? You know, when a manager steps in, it's usually because that person, other than the red rooster, is going to (laughs) get wins. If if you're managed by somebody, usually you're going to get a push and you're going to win matches. And I see a lot of our guys, especially like, oh, yeah, we're good friends. You know, maybe, you know, he needs some guys, you know, I'd love to have him manage me. And it's like, yeah, but. I'm having you lose matches to have a manager in there and you still lose matches makes you even a bigger loser than you are now. Yeah, good point. Well, speaking of this, these heel turn situation, wow, AEW has got a little fun on their hands. Yikes. As Sammy Guevara just lost the TNT title back to Scorpio sky. That's a fifty. And that's a WWE booking. In a, that was a, it. Was a great run though. Was that that last run was a great run for was, Sammy. Though. As he and Ty Conti now, I think are getting go away heat at this point, and it's amazing because Sammy was Beloved. so hot, and the minute that they started bringing him out with Ty Conti, the AEW fans turned on him. Why? Hard. Dime. Well, they because it, you know he's irritating. He's the love of her life, man. They've been together for a month and a half, and he is the <laughs> love of her life. I saw her say it. Yeah, it it just happened so fast. So, of course, if you remember uh, a while back, Sammy had proposed to his other girlfriend on AEW programming, and now all of a sudden it's Ty Conti and they're swapping spit. And and by the way, they also won the AAA mixed tag team titles last night. Well, so you know now they get to lose the Triple uh, A mixed tag team titles. When word comes out that they broke up, something like that. But yeah, yeah. so so that happened too. So they're going to be more irritating. But it was a, well, a, a good, overall good, good match, her. good rub for her. Nobody cared about her until now. She's been involved with Guevara. So. Yeah, 
I I will say that. But but it but what's but it's really interesting because we talk about the the face heel dynamic, and of course everybody hated Dan Lambert. That was probably the most universally hated guy in WWE. Irritating, annoying. God, go away. We want to just see you get stapled like Chris Jericho did to him. But all of a sudden, because of Sammy bringing out Ty, and they were in a feud with Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page and Dan Lambert, and now Paige Van Zant's involved in this, all of a sudden, America's top team is super over. Scorpio Sky is the the man. Everybody loves Scorpio, and Dan Lambert's getting cheered, and Paige Van Zant is getting cheered. And I know that wasn't the plan. They so, are the West Texas Rednecks of AEW. <laughs> so it's it's amazing how just one little thing not only affected Sammy, but it, it's it's made a ripple effect throughout other characters in AEW. Amazing how that happened. So it's I, organic, and that's and that's what happens. And it, what's, what I did love about AEW is that the the in the Owen the Owen Hart tournament. Uh, to see who was qualifying match when they had uh, FTR fight each other. Great match. It was a, no, it was a fantastic match, but you had it. I, you, you proved that you didn't have to have one of them be a heel and one of them be a face. They were both able to stay as who they are in that match and after the match and everything be cool. And they, it's, it's funny that I, I read some backstory on that, that they were, they had been pushing for that to happen for a while. They wanted to wrestle so badly, and they and Tony Khan was like, "Well, we, you know, how are we going to work it? Where where could we put this in that it's going to make sense?" Well, you know, this came up with the Owen Hart tournament, and they decide, "Hey, let's go for it." And it was it was a fun match to watch. It really was. I'm, I'm waiting for Cesaro to be part of the uh, Blackpool Fight Club. Oh, that's actually a good idea. That's how I would book it. How do you not bring that guy in that, in that group? That would be amazing, and and Wheeler Yuta, by the way, has done a fantastic job. Uh, I mean, he had to be really flattered to be asked to be involved in that whole thing I mean, with, right Dan- now, with it, Daniel it, it, Bryan and Moxley. And Mox. But that's I what mean, that faction should be about. They should create one other star out of it. That's a young guy that they could, you know, put under the wing. I didn't see who it was, but they were claiming that somebody else was brought up for the idea, but the other guys kiboshed it. Do you know who that was? I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah, I mean, I for- God, I forgot who it was. It was I'm just already. Who it may have been. I'm gonna have to look into that one. But yeah, Wheeler, you just done a great job, and he is super over now too. You know, so. I, I still think that AEW has its finger in too many pots with too many different people. It, it's, you know, I can't wait for Miro to come in, boy. When he comes in, he's going to be unstoppable. What you know, and and that's something that that one thing that a problem that AEW does have is. It, they're having issues with storylines and having so many people. And, you know, last we saw Miro as an example, he was in the white void months ago, and we have not seen Miro since. And Miro was probably, to me, was doing the best work of his career. He was Rusev, of course, in WWE. No. Was doing the best work of his career as TNT champion. He was dominant. He was just coming off as a someone that you could think would win the world title, and now he's... And and that's gone. and to be honest with you, that's the problem. And what I said from the beginning with AEW signing everybody that left WWE is well, right. He has a new toy. It's a new toy every week, right? Yeah. And so your old toys get forgotten pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, right. And they're not they're not even old toys. That's the thing. It's like so Christian Christian went over there to become a manager, basically. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure he's not. You know, what's Mark, you know, what's Big Show? I thought he was supposed to wrestle. That, that, is, that, that was the name I was just going to bring up. Do you, do you know what they're talking about doing with Big Show, by the way? What? They are talking about having him Sending become him back? Captain Insano. You remember from The Water Boy? Yeah. At the beginning uh, of the movie when he was Captain Insano? They are actually that'll talking be, about that'll reviving That'll be hilarious the for three weeks, and then they'll have to repackage him that's, for the six hundred and twenty fourth time. To me that's that's such a WWE move, not an AEW move. I agree. I, I agree. But you know, it might be funny for a while. To, for you know, a it's like it's It'll like a funny Mick, for a minute. If, if you play it right, it's like a Mick Foley thing. You know, you bring out well, dude love yeah, every once it, in a while. It'll be great on their YouTube show. Yeah. You know, so, they need content. Yeah, there you go. Well of course in also in AEW the COVID bug bit the AEW boys. Specifically Hangman had a page your world champion got put on the bench. <laughs> When they were getting ready to announce that he was going to be taking on CM Punk here in Las Vegas at the Double or Nothing pay per view, so Punk kind of had to come out and do a promo to make the announcement. 
But we're going to get to see CM Punk challenge for the AEW title here in Las Vegas. And the the question I have is that kind of puts AEW in a no win situation because if you have Punk go over, then what you're saying was Page should never have been the champion. And if you don't have him go over, he's like, how does Punk lose to Hangman Adam Page? Well, they had Danielson lose to Hangman Adam Page, so and at they, some and at Danielson some, survived. And at some point, Kenny Omega is going to be back. Some point. Yeah, he's he's still recovering. Well, he's got, he's got uh, first. He's got a few through uh, three Japanese uh, dolls, and then when he gets past that, then he can. Yeah, don't back forget. In. Yeah, don't forget the broom. Yeah, <sighs> and a nine-year-old. Yeah, L- ripping Kenny Omega a little bit and deservedly clean, so on that one. It can be called the clean sweep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, but but I think that's going to be a, a blast for yeah, everybody's got tickets and uh, to go see that and. I think it's going to be a, a lot of fun. That place is going to be rocking with CM Punk challenging for and the yet, world title. The most compelling character in all of AEW. I want to hear your story about uh, Mr. MJF. Yeah, well, MJF cannot seem to uh, put Wardlow away with anybody. Lance Archer couldn't get it done. So now they were hinting, and I, I can't imagine they're going to. it's going to be anybody. But, but W. Morrissey, who, of course, was big Cass in WWE, who's been wrestling in Impact, is apparently the next one that MJF is bringing in to try to stop Wardlow. That could be fun. It's actually going to end his, up being Omos. <laughs> you know, his work, I was never a big cast fan or anything like that. And then, you know, he kind of imploded on the indie scene and, you know, threatened to beat up Joey Janela and things like that. But when I got to see him at the Impact tapings in Vegas, extremely impressive you know it seems like he's got his his act together he's doing well you know mentally and you know handling all the issues he had and physically he's a he's a monster you know i I was looking at you know doing something trying to bring him in to work cross down the line because i just thought like wow this guy is a beast these days no no enzo to to hold him down is what it is (laughs) That well, that whole thing, you know, we were just talking about it uh, on the break here. That those guys never won a tag title. They didn't win in it as over as they were. They never won the NXT titles. Never won a title. I think they were going to until the the, what were the Vaudevillians? Is that was that their name? The Vaudevillians. Yes, my guy Simon Gotch, one of the coolest dudes in in the wrestling business. So that match when Enzo hit his head on the rope. Oh, that was horrible. That kind of ruined everything. That was horrible. Well, Enzo was kind of acting like a jerk too. Yeah. He was really out of hand backstage, and 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 when and, they went to WWE, they you know Vince saw money in in big cast as a singles act anyway, so they kind of stopped using them as a tag quickly and tried to give him that big push until you know everything went down. Yeah, it didn't work. It was just I I still remember the Enzo up in the in the cage in that one match, and it was just. Ugh. Oh, it was the shark, oh, the sh- in the shark cage. That's yeah, right. It was really bad, and it just didn't. They should have just left those guys together, and 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 really, the problem is when you split that team up, it's a guy who's six foot ten against little old Enzo Amore, and it's like Enzo was never bought it. Enzo was great as a mouthpiece, but that was about it. Yeah, he was he was the guy that got beat up in the tag matches, and then yeah. Cass would come in and save, save everything. The day. You know, and and it should have left the. Well, they they could have feuded Lashley with Big Cass, and in one corner you had Enzo, and the other you had Leo Rush at the time. Jeez, <laughs> oh, Leo Rush and Enzo Amore as a tag team. Boy, talk about diva esque there. Oh my God! But wow. The, you know, we were just talking about AEW, and it just made me think all of a sudden because we were talking about how many people are pushing. So what's going on with Jericho now in AEW? Now the Jericho Appreciation Society. It's it's him and Eddie Kingston. Well, you know he, he's got a lot on his on his plate. He's you know making sure he's he's you know he's booking all the people for the uh, Jericho cruise. So yeah, that's keeping him busy too. But yeah, I I I'm not so you know I was pretty excited about the the JAS and it went down and pretty it's, fast. It's, yeah, the it's, idea it, behind it is great, but they 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 don't have enough time to stick with everything they want to do. You know, if they just use Jack Swagger and uh, LAX a little bit, it would be it would be nice. There you go. Remember that guy, Jack Swagger? Yeah, <laughs> yes, I remember Jack Swagger. All you need is Jake, Zeb Coulter, Jake, and you're all Jake set. Jake Hager is still there in the JAS. 
it's like, wow, here's a guy who just must be happy to get a paycheck because he does absolutely zero. Yeah, he's pretty much. Pretty much. Zero. At least Santana and Ortiz can go out and have a good match and lose to whatever tag team they decide they want to push over him. But, man, Swagger don't even get, like, matches. He just sits there and has to laugh at Jericho's jokes. <laughs> Maybe that's a, that's a big gig, man. Up, man. That'd be interesting. Yeah, it's so you know, a lot of a lot of entertaining stuff going on in EW this week. Uh, Hook and Danhausen, by the way, I don't know what the hell they're doing with that. That is making no sense to me. Why you would put Danhausen with Hook is just they're teaming them up. I don't know what the hell they're doing. That's the foil, Danhausen. He's so that dude is over. Well, I know the they brought him in a Ring of Honor. People like love Danhausen, so it's 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 that niche thing. Who loves Hook? But I mean, the, I mean, it seemed the like Hook's Hook, over. But it seemed like Hook, Hook had a rocket ship tied to his back, and now he's got an anchor. One. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that they just don't go together to me. You know, I mean, they go together like Ramalai Malama, Ding 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 Ding. Something. Well, like who, who do you want Hook to beat up? Another guy twice his size. We've seen that fifteen times already. I don't know. I just, I just don't see Hook and Danhausen as a combo. Hook's going to turn on uh, Taz. Oh wait, no, that's Ray and Dominic. <laughs> yeah, you're still waiting. They're gonna, they, they said, you know what? They're taking too long. WWE. We're going to pull the trigger first. Yeah, I'm telling you, Dominic's going to join Edge's faction and turn on Ray. Stop. <laughs> God, I'm cutting your mic tomorrow. Oh my God. Um, well, I, would, I would say something, but I met Dominic, and he's a nice kid. Yeah. <laughs> they did train at the FSW facility, so I, I, I cannot, you know, I cannot say bad things about anybody who comes at our facility to make us look good. It's funny because I recently watched a replay of the ladder match between Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio with the the adoption papers or whatever, whatever mm-hmm. was hanging above the ring, and young Dominic coming into the ring and holding the ladder. I'm like. Holy crap, he was a tiny little kid back then. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Amazing right, you would have swore he was Ray's kid because he was so small. Now you look at him and it's like, well, maybe he was Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ouch. By the way, this is the Mark Hoke Show on KDWN 101.5 FM 720 AM. Yeah, we're the talk of Las Vegas, all right. I. Uh, Joe, something happened, by the way, in a WWE live event in the UK that I wanted to get your input on real quick. Rope snapped on the top uh, yes. of the ring. Lashley in, fell out the ring. In a match with Drew McIntyre mm-hmm. and Bobby Lashley. And Lashley, wow. I mean, he went um, you know, head over tea kettle on that one. Fortunately, it was not hurt. It but looked a lot worse than it actually was, it, I guess. It, it looked really bad. I mean, I'm looking at a picture of him right now where he's got a hand down, feet are straight up. It's not good. Yeah, but We had that happen in 2014, Matt Hardy against Lance Archer. Well, one thing that I, I was listening to Jim Cornette's podcast who said that WWE actually uses real ropes on theirs, whereas most promotions use promotions use steel cable. And... And I'm just curious, is you know, is that something that is common that you know you'd be using a regular rope, which I would think would be more vulnerable to breaking, but obviously it's not gonna be as hard to hit. You know, what's the what's the rationale between using steel cable and rope first? Well, uh preference. You know, uh we used the steel cable for a long time and then when impact came to town, uh they had to order new ropes because they did not want to use the steel cable they wanted to use the real ropes so we basically changed out what we used because we then ended up using it afterwards because you know hey they paid for them so you know we might as well use them <laughs> so we got a minute you know because the wear and tear is a little bit it seems to be more on, on the steel cable but i know we had issues, but that might have a lot to do with the eye hooks on that are connected, and that's where it snaps from is the hook. And I know in our ring, they ended up – we had issues, a lot of issues with it for a brief time because it was the screw-ins. And if you don't check it, you know, our ring snapped at practice a bunch of times, and, like, thankfully – you know, there's there's a uh, got about three million views. Uh, it's like I think Chris Bay is on his, uh, you know, Twitter that uh, that's his pin tweet is he was in the ring just by himself, just doing some stuff up in the thing, and the ring and the and the top rope snapped. 
Wow. And, you know, fortunately, he didn't kill himself. Yeah. But, you know, it, those are the things that happen because the second rope generally isn't going to snap. All right. You know, well, and, and the bottom rope. So what we it also happened at a show we did at the Silverton, like the second match of the night. And we All couldn't right. fix it, so we had to move the bottom rope. Joe, we got to. I, 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 I do. We got to wrap up here. Uh, yeah, interesting stuff. But hey, I'm Mark Hoke. Thanks for being with us. Follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show, Facebook the Mark Hoke Show, uh, MarkHokeShow dot com, <laughs> and we will see you next week on the Mark Hoke Show. Thanks, Fish and Joe. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>